What if I told you that a single technological breakthrough changed the course of World War II so dramatically that it forced the German Luftwaffe to abandon entire tactical doctrines overnight? Picture this. German pilots who had dominated European skies for years, suddenly finding their formations obliterated, not by enemy fighters, but by shells that seemed to explode with supernatural precision around their aircraft. This wasn't science fiction. This was the proximity fuse, a secret so closely guarded that even Allied soldiers didn't know it existed until years after the war ended. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most revolutionary yet underappreciated weapons of the Second World War, a device so effective that it increased anti-aircraft kill rates by over 500% and fundamentally altered the balance of air power. This is the story of American ingenuity meeting German engineering prowess in the deadliest game of technological cat and mouse ever played in the skies above Europe and the Pacific. The proximity fuse represented more than just another weapon. It embodied a complete revolution in military thinking. For the first time in history, a projectile could make intelligent decisions about when and where to explode, turning every anti-aircraft gun into a precision instrument of destruction. The implications were so profound that military strategists are still studying its impact today, recognizing it as the ancestor of modern smart weapons and guided missile systems. The year was 1940, and Britain stood alone against the Nazi war machine. The Blitz was raining death upon London, and German bombers seemed unstoppable. Traditional anti-aircraft guns required direct hits to bring down enemy aircraft, a nearly impossible feat when you consider that a pilot had mere seconds to aim at a target, moving at hundreds of miles per hour, thousands of feet in the air. The mathematics were brutal. It took an average of 2,500 anti-aircraft shells to down a single enemy aircraft using conventional contact fuses. But in a secret laboratory in Silver Spring, Maryland, a team of American scientists was working on something that would change warfare forever. Led by Merle Tuve and his team at the Applied Physics Laboratory, they were developing what would become known as the Variable Time Fuse, or VT Fuse, though history would remember it by its more descriptive name, the Proximity Fuse. The concept was revolutionary yet elegantly simple. Instead of requiring a direct hit, these shells would explode when they detected they were near their target. The implications were staggering, and both sides of the conflict knew that whoever perfected this technology first would gain an overwhelming advantage in the air war that was becoming increasingly decisive. The timing of this development was crucial. By 1940, the nature of aerial warfare had evolved far beyond the relatively slow biplanes of World War I. Modern fighters and bombers were faster, flew higher, and employed sophisticated evasive maneuvers that made them extremely difficult targets for ground-based anti-aircraft systems. The Luftwaffe's success in Poland, Norway and France had demonstrated the decisive power of air superiority, making effective anti-aircraft defense a matter of national survival for the remaining Allied powers. The story begins not with military strategists, but with civilian scientists who found themselves thrust into the most consequential research project of their lives. Merle Tuve, a soft-spoken physicist from South Dakota, had spent his career studying the upper atmosphere using radio wave techniques. Never in his wildest dreams had he imagined that his expertise in radio waves would become crucial to winning the greatest war in human history. The challenges seemed insurmountable. How do you fit a radar system, complete with transmitter, receiver and power source, into the nose of an artillery shell? Remember, these shells experience acceleration forces of up to 20,000 times the force of gravity when fired. Forces that would instantly destroy any conventional electronic equipment. Any electronic component would be subjected to forces that would crush most materials to powder. The team needed to create vacuum tubes that could survive this incredible shock while remaining sensitive enough to detect aircraft at distances measured in mere dozens of yards. The breakthrough came through a combination of American mass production capabilities and innovative engineering solutions that pushed the boundaries of 1940s technology. The scientists developed miniature vacuum tubes using techniques borrowed from the radio industry, but hardened them using revolutionary new materials and manufacturing processes. Each fuse contained five vacuum tubes, a battery and a complete radar system, all packed into a space smaller than a coffee cup and weighing less than four pounds. The development process was fraught with failures that would have discouraged less determined researchers Early prototypes exploded prematurely, 
failed to detect targets or simply disintegrated under the tremendous forces of launch, the team went through hundreds of design iterations, testing each component under conditions that simulated the brutal environment inside an artillery shell. They developed new types of solder that wouldn't melt under extreme acceleration, created shock-absorbing materials that could protect delicate electronics, and designed power systems that could function reliably in the chaotic environment of aerial combat. But the real genius lay not just in miniaturization, but in the fuse's ability to distinguish between legitimate targets and false signals. The device had to ignore ground reflections, clouds, rain, and even flocks of birds, while reliably detonating when it detected the specific radar signature of enemy aircraft. This required sophisticated signal processing that pushed 1940s technology to its absolute limits, incorporating principles that wouldn't become common in civilian electronics for decades. The proximity fuse represented a fundamental shift in military thinking that went far beyond mere technological innovation. For centuries, warfare had been about direct confrontation, sword against sword, cannon against fortress, bullet against target. The proximity fuse introduced the concept of area denial through intelligent weapons systems. This wasn't just about hitting your target, it was about creating a zone of lethal space that enemy forces simply couldn't penetrate. The psychological impact was equally revolutionary and perhaps even more significant than the physical destruction it caused. German pilots who had trained their entire careers to avoid direct hits suddenly found themselves facing weapons that didn't need direct hits. Their evasive maneuvers, perfected through years of combat experience against conventional anti-aircraft fire, became largely irrelevant. A shell that exploded 50 feet away could be just as deadly as one that scored a direct impact filling the air with deadly shrapnel in a pattern that was nearly impossible to avoid through conventional aerial tactics. This technology also represented the beginning of what we now recognize as the modern military-industrial complex. The proximity fuse required unprecedented cooperation between universities, private industry, and the military. Scientists who had never seen combat found themselves designing weapon systems that would determine life and death for thousands of young men while military officers had to trust civilian researchers with secrets that could determine the outcome of the entire war. The mass production of proximity fuses became one of the most closely guarded industrial secrets of the war, involving a level of security and compartmentalization that was unprecedented in American manufacturing. Entire factories were built in remote locations with workers who had no idea what they were manufacturing. The security was so tight that components were produced in different facilities across the country and assembled elsewhere, ensuring that no single location had complete knowledge of the final product. Workers were told they were producing special radio equipment or electronic components for communication systems, never knowing that their handiwork would soon be exploding around German aircraft. The project required the development of entirely new manufacturing techniques, mass-producing miniature vacuum tubes that could survive artillery launch required precision manufacturing capabilities that didn't exist before the war. American industry rose to meet this challenge, developing automated production lines that could turn out thousands of these sophisticated devices daily while maintaining the quality control necessary for a weapon system where failure meant allied lives lost. The proximity fuse's first major test came not in Europe but in the Pacific theater where American forces were reeling from the devastating effectiveness of Japanese air power. When the Japanese launched their attack on Pearl Harbor, American anti-aircraft defenses proved woefully inadequate. Traditional shells scored virtually no hits on the attacking aircraft, and the few Japanese planes that were downed fell primarily to machine gun fire and the occasional lucky direct hit from conventional artillery. By 1943, proximity fuses began appearing on American ships in the Pacific, and the results were immediate and dramatic. During the Battle of the Philippine Sea in June 1944, American naval anti-aircraft fire achieved kill rates that seemed almost impossible to contemporary observers. Japanese pilots who had dominated Pacific skies since 1941 suddenly found themselves facing a wall of precisely timed explosions that turned their own speed and altitude advantages against them. The effectiveness of the proximity fuse in naval combat was particularly pronounced because ships could carry the sophisticated fire control systems necessary to maximize the weapon's potential. Naval gunners could track incoming aircraft with radar, 
calculate intercept courses with mechanical computers and fire coordinated barrages that created overlapping fields of destruction. Japanese aircraft that had previously been able to penetrate American defensive screens through speed and surprise found themselves flying into clouds of precisely timed explosions that made survival almost impossible. The technology's effectiveness was so dramatic that it fundamentally altered Japanese tactical doctrine in ways that would have far-reaching consequences for the remainder of the Pacific War. The feared kamikaze attacks that would later terrorize American naval forces were, in part, a direct response to the proximity fuse. Japanese strategists realized that conventional bombing runs were becoming suicide missions against American ships equipped with VT fuses, so they embraced actual suicide missions, reasoning that determined pilots willing to die for their emperor might be able to penetrate the new defensive systems where conventional tactics had failed completely. But the proximity fuse's most significant and psychologically devastating impact came when the Allies finally began using it against German forces in the European theater. The weapon was so secret that it was initially forbidden for use over land, where enemy forces might recover unexploded shells and reverse engineer the technology. This restriction remained in place until late 1944, when German defeat seemed inevitable, and Allied commanders finally received permission to use proximity fuses during the desperate German offensive known as the Battle of the Bulge. The proximity fuse forced military strategists on both sides to confront uncomfortable questions about the nature of warfare itself that resonated far beyond the immediate tactical situation. Was it ethical to deploy weapons that made traditional defensive measures obsolete? The fuse represented a new category of warfare technology, one that didn't just kill more efficiently, but that fundamentally altered the strategic balance between offensive and defensive capabilities in ways that military theorists are still analyzing today. German scientists, led by brilliant minds like Werner von Braun and other members of the German rocket program, were simultaneously developing their own revolutionary weapon systems. The V-1 flying bombs and V-2 rockets represented Germany's attempt to create weapons that could strike targets with unprecedented precision and devastating psychological effect. The proximity fuse was America's answer to this technological arms race, proving that innovation could come from defense as well as offense, and that democratic societies could compete effectively with totalitarian regimes in the realm of advanced weapons development. The ethical implications extended far beyond the immediate battlefield and raised questions that remain relevant in our current debates about autonomous weapons systems. The Proximity Fuse project required thousands of workers who had no knowledge of what they were creating, raising questions about moral responsibility in modern weapons production. Factory workers in remote locations spent months manufacturing components for a weapon system they couldn't comprehend, while their sons and brothers faced enemy fire overseas. This compartmentalization of knowledge and responsibility would become a defining characteristic of modern military industrial production, with implications that extend into our current discussions about artificial intelligence and automated warfare systems. Perhaps most significantly, the proximity fuse demonstrated how quickly technological advantages could shift the balance of power in modern warfare, a lesson that proved prophetic for the Cold War era that would follow. German forces that had dominated European skies for years found their tactical advantages neutralized within months of the fuse's deployment. This rapid obsolescence of military doctrine would become a recurring theme in post-war military planning as both American and Soviet strategists recognized that the next technological breakthrough could render entire military doctrines obsolete overnight. The weapon also highlighted the crucial importance of industrial production capacity in modern technological warfare. German scientists actually developed their own version of the proximity fuse and their prototype systems showed considerable promise in laboratory testing. However, they lacked the industrial capacity and raw materials necessary to mass produce it effectively under wartime conditions. American factories, protected by vast oceans and operating at unprecedented scales, could produce proximity fuses by the millions, while German industry struggled under constant Allied bombing and increasingly severe resource shortages. By the war's end, American factories had produced over 22 million proximity fuses, each one representing a triumph of scientific ingenuity and industrial capacity. These small devices, 
each containing more sophisticated electronics than most homes of the era, had fundamentally altered the course of the world's deadliest conflict. German pilots who survived the war would later describe the horror of watching their formations disintegrate around them as shells exploded with uncanny precision, taking down aircraft that should have been safely out of range of conventional anti-aircraft fire. The proximity fuse saved countless Allied lives while hastening the end of a war that had already claimed over 50 million people worldwide. But its legacy extends far beyond World War II and continues to influence military technology and strategy today. The principles developed for the proximity fuse would later influence everything from guided missiles to satellite technology. The miniaturized electronics pioneered for military use would eventually transform civilian life, contributing to the development of computers, cell phones, and the internet that now connects our modern world. The manufacturing techniques developed to mass-produce proximity fuses helped establish American dominance in electronics production that would last for decades after the war. The security protocols and compartmentalized production methods developed for the VT fuse program became the template for later classified military projects, including the Manhattan Project and Cold War weapons development programs. Today, as we face new technological challenges and ethical questions about autonomous weapons systems and artificial intelligence in warfare, the story of the proximity fuse offers both inspiration and warning. It demonstrates the incredible power of human ingenuity when channeled toward a just cause and supported by democratic institutions and industrial capacity. But it also reminds us that technological advantages are temporary and that every innovation in warfare carries profound moral implications that extend far beyond the immediate battlefield. The German pilots who first encountered proximity fuses in the skies over the Pacific and later over Europe had no idea they were facing a weapon that represented the future of warfare itself. In those terrifying moments when their aircraft were torn apart by precisely timed explosions, they were witnessing the birth of the modern age of military technology, an age where victory would increasingly belong not to the bravest or most skilled, but to those who could harness science and industry most effectively in service of their cause. The proximity fuse proved that in modern warfare, the most dangerous enemy might not be the one you can see coming, but the one that can see you first and react faster than human reflexes allow. And in the skies above Europe and the Pacific, American technology ensured that enemy aircraft were seen, tracked and destroyed with a precision that would have seemed magical to previous generations of warriors. This is the ultimate legacy of the proximity fuse, a reminder that in the hands of free people, science and industry can become the ultimate weapons against tyranny and that sometimes the difference between victory and defeat comes down to whose scientists can solve impossible problems under unimaginable pressure while maintaining their commitment to human freedom and dignity.